Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're going to eat some lunch while we discuss the classic thriller movie, House on Haunted Hill. And this is actually a collaboration with the YouTube channel Team Dave and Mon. And we will start this spooky discussion right, right after, after this. this. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews. We do recipe videos. Sometimes we actually sit down and eat. Yes. We talk about various keto topics. And then once a week, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So a lot of people have been asking us, like, hey, can we see what you guys eat? So yeah. we thought this would be a perfect way to do it. Yeah. And I actually reached out to Team Dave and Mon. Who's Hello, one of our subscribers. Miss Monica. And we're one of her subscribers because yep. she is amazing. Yep. She's had an amazing transformation. Yep. She's actually been interviewed on CBS. Yes. I mean, just like crazy awesome and she happens to like horror films right now if you haven't seen her channel i will leave a link to her channel go and check it out i'll leave it right over rachel's hi. head hi team david Mom. <laughs> so uh yeah we watched the movie house on haunted hill which was an incredible movie we both love like older movies yeah like, from the 50s 60s and beyond mm -hmm. and this one was a good one i had never um seen it before yeah so it was uh vincent price movie so we're heading into like the fall months when you kind of watch the spooky you know turner classic movies on and so yeah i was excited and i love those kind of movies just because you know, like i was always like a hitchcock fan you like i always liked reading edgar Allan poe and stuff i'm not so much into like the newer slasher films once in a blue moon but ones that like make you think well that's the thing and i do love alfred hitchcock movies and i had no idea that this movie that came out in 1959 it was just like um it was a low budget film but it did so well that it actually um actually i can't even speak i'm so excited um it actually inspired one of the moviegoers to make a movie of his own that was a low budget suspense thriller and that was alfred hitchcock because of this movie he actually went on to make psycho that is like so awesome how cool is that for an inspiration so let's talk about what we're eating and i am sorry i'm super red um, we knew it was going to rain tomorrow, and so, like, I tried to get, like, all of our cutting done. We cut, like, the entire church and other houses to top it off. For the first time in a long time, it was so dusty out. I started having, like, allergy attacks. I know. My nose is running. My face is all red from the allergy attacks. But I'm so sorry. We haven't had rain in a few days, and it was, like, super dusty. And I am, like, pale as a ghost in comparison. <laughs> yeah, so, like... Yeah, Yay. like lobster or not. Oh, I love you, my okay, lobster. Okay, so we're doing some experimenting. So we have um, some green beans with some Chef Chamois butter. This is the French onion one. That isn't a very, ex like, crazy experiment. Okay, then this here is, I'm kind of playing around with keto chow. This one may be a winner. I'm not quite sure yet. Okay. Uh, we're using, like, some of the tomato basil base, and I'm attempting two things. I'm trying Sloppy Joe's. And I'm also trying to make it with a chili instead of putting in like, you know, tomato puree and yeah. that kind of stuff using the tomato base. And so we're experimenting with a little bit. Hopefully that recipe will be coming out you soon. You have to make a sloppy joe because you're joe. <laughs> so that that's what we're eating here with the ground beef. Um, and we haven't eaten today. So I just kind of like, I've got a little bit bigger serving than Rachel, obviously. And that makes me sad. Then these are the Carolina um, Keto Bakery pork rinds. Because we want to finish those up. I'm not sad anymore. We each have a pickle. And then I also have a piece of salami. It's like an uncured salami that I got from Whole Foods. Yay! So... I'll let you start because I'm hungry. Well, I just, I absolutely love this movie. And I'm sure we're going to have like a little bit of a spoiler alert. But come on. This movie's yeah. from 1959. If, if I you ruin, haven't seen it, like, sorry. sorry. <laughs> like, but um, yeah. So Vincent Price plays Mr. Lauren, this like eccentric millionaire who has five people who are strangers to each other come to um, spend the night in this haunted mansion, supposedly haunted mansion. And if they can make it through the whole night, locked up in this mansion, they get $10,000 a piece. Right. Which, 
like doing a little math is like more than eighty thousand dollars a piece for no. for now. So would you be willing to spend the night in like a haunted mansion? Absolutely. Like, you th- for for eighty thousand dollars, maybe I, even for ten thousand. I'll do it for ten thousand dollars, especially when like they hand me a gun too. <laughs> Yeah, because here's the thing. When all these people like show up, and I mean, this guy knows how to throw a theme party. He actually has all the guests arrive in a hearse. Each of them have their own hearse. And they pull up to um, this mansion, which is actually uh, um, an, an actual mansion that was designed by uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, the famous architect. Right. From, what was it, Falling Waters, I think, is one of his um, masterpieces. But, so they get in there, and you find out right quick, they do not have a good marriage. Mr. and Mrs. Lauren may have money, but they don't have a good marriage. It's like the fourth marriage. It's like his fourth marriage. And she clearly hates his guts. And, I mean, he hates her guts, too. And so, um, for some reason, he he decides to give all the, the guests a gun. Like, well, in case you run into something creepy, shoot a ghost. But I don't know how that's supposed to help. Right. But it it turns out that... Are you going to spoil the movie for people? Well, yeah, I have to, right? <laughs> like, it was so interesting because... I hope you don't want to watch this movie without knowing what happens. Well, there's a lot of, like, little jump scares. There's a lot of jump scares, but the ending was, like, kind of surprising. Mm-hmm. Sorry. So there's all these jump, jump scares where nothing's really happening. You're not seeing, like, an actual ghost or anything, but... Like, a lot of prop stuff. But it's adding to this feeling like your imagination is running wild. Right. And that's what I think is lost on, like, modern horror films. I mean, they're showing you so much gore and so much slasher stuff that, like, your imagination doesn't have to do anything. Right. right? So, um, but this one, you're getting scared. And you're kind of getting scared alongside this one guest. I had actually written down her name because I keep forgetting it. Nora. Nora is one of the guests. She just happens to be somebody that's in the employment of Vincent Price, um, works for a company that he owns. And And his explanation is like, she's here because I know she needs a lot of money. Yeah, they're all there, all five people. So you have like this doctor, you have a stunt pilot, you have um, this girl that works for the company, you have a newspaper reporter, and and there and then you have this guy that's there that like this was his family homestead mm-hmm. growing up, but they all need money, so that's why they're there under under that guise that they all need money, and um, but yeah, so like you're getting scared alongside this one character Nora, who's just this young girl, and it just seems like everything is preying on her. If there's like a skeleton that falls out of the closet, if there's like a gross mask fake head to like find she's the one that like finds it yeah the entire movie rachel's like why are they picking on her why is she the only one who's getting scared yeah and it turns out that they're picking on her specifically because the wife it's not a total stranger to everybody there's a doctor that's there um dr trent and like her and him are having an affair like and and are planning on killing Vincent Price with one of these guns they've laid out. Right. And so and they're trying to scare her so that she would, like, shoot just him. accidentally, like, shoot him because something jumps out. And it's they're setting it up that it's Vincent Price and she's going to turn and shoot him. Yeah, like, he's going to come through the wrong door at the, wrong, at the right time. Right. And then she's going to shoot him. But Vincent Price... As well, well, that was the shocker at the end. Knew about it all along. He was one step ahead, and he put blanks in that girl's gun, so he didn't actually get shot. And so he winds up scaring his wife and her lover, and then they back themselves into a vat of acid, though. Which my whole thing was, as soon as we saw it, you see this acid pool that's Who's in, like, the dungeon or the basement. of acid laying like, why around. why would you leave that pool of acid in your basement? Maybe drain that thing, <sighs> right? Now, I'm tasting this stuff. Are you, you're serious? This actually has keto chow in it. This has keto chow in it. I don't want to disclose the recipe too much, but it's got a couple of scoops of the keto chow, the tomato basil. Oh my goodness, this is good. Oh Yeah. I would totally put this, I would scoop a big scoop of this on um, one of the smart buns. 
I mean, I thought about pulling out the smart buns for today, but I got home too late and I didn't, I was like, I am hungry. You're like ready to go. You know, we like literally mowed, like, I don't even remember how big the church is. It's like seven or eight acres. And it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to, I'm ready to eat. You're ready to eat. It even has that like sloppy Joe orange color. Right. You have to have the sloppy Joe messy orange color. And it's getting all over my clothes. But yeah, so that was like such an interesting movie. It was so good. Like I was like stuck to the movie screen the entire time. But you know what I kept thinking about Nora? Nora is like the little woman on the inside of me that's always saying, we're hungry, we're hungry, freak out. Like right. you, if we haven't gotten food yet, you need to, like we need to freak out, right? And when we do like intermittent fasting, I think about that. Like sometimes at, at hour 20 on like a 24 hour fast, I'm like ravenously hungry. At hour 23, it's gone. Right. And that's not possible, right? And that's why I'm always saying like, you know, if you think you're hungry, yeah. if, if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm so hungry, I can eat anything. See if you can wait a half hour to an hour. If that, ha- if after a half hour to an hour, you're like no longer hungry, it was just your hormones. It was just ghrelin kind of playing his trick because you're used to eating at that point, you know, but if you can get past, like, that's when you always want to kind of trick your body. Don't give in to the ghrelin. Wait a little while. Cause that's how you can retrain yourself. It's like, if you are always used to eating breakfast and you want to try not eating breakfast, those first three or four days, every morning when you would normally eat like your you know, breakfast, that ghrelin's going to kick in going, hey, it's time to eat. You're hungry. You're hungry. But if you can get past day three, you won't have that effect anymore. I love that because I felt so bad for Nora. She was getting pushed around that entire house. Like, like that, the fear, they were just absolutely playing on her and she was going, falling right into whatever the trap is that they laid for her. Right. I mean, you think about that. How bad would she have felt if she actually killed somebody, right? right? Like, she would have felt terrible. She she definitely made a mistake she didn't mean to make. Fortunately, like, it was a blank. But still, I think about, like, how many times I get pushed around by my hormones. Right. And then I wind up giving in and then doing something that I totally regret, right? And then sometimes it's funny because you figure out – you're trying to figure out, like – why is this even happening to me? Like, you know, why yeah. I don't understand these hormone things. It's coming out of nowhere. And it's like, it reminds me of like, even like there's the scene in the movie where, you know, Vincent Price's wife is like supposedly dead at this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she and fakes she's her own like, death. She fakes her own death and she's outside this window and this rope comes up through the window and it's coming through. And I, I was watching the entire thing. It's like, sometimes you just love watching older movies mm-hmm. because I love special effects now. Right. Mm-hmm. But when you can watch a movie like that and I'm like, I'm sitting there going, how did they do that? Like, how did they make that rope go? And like, I don't see, I mean, I'm sure it was just like wires they that had were like to film invisible it backwards wires, or something. just the way it was going. And it's like, but again, for her, like this thing is coming out of nowhere, right? Yeah. And that's like how our hormones are. They just come out and pop out of nowhere. Yeah. And even though you think like you're the only person, you're the Nora, you're like isolated and no one, you know, like no one else is experiencing this you know, haunted situation, like, we all have it. Right. We all go through it. And you're not alone. You're you're not the only Nora that's, like, running through the house going, like, oh, my gosh. Like, mm-hmm. I'm the only person seeing all this scary stuff. This is delicious. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I'm so excited to find out, like, what is Monica's perspective yeah. on this film? Because she is absolutely an expert on horror films right i mean she can watch ones that were like way scarier than ones that i can watch like i'll never sleep again if i see some of the scary movies like as joe well knows like sometimes i'll be watching something and be like turn it off we're never gonna get to sleep if you watch this and then i have fun because while we're watching a scary movie i'm like ah! Like in making her jump. That, oh my gosh. That's a declaration of war right there, we right? Did, it's funny. The la- I think the last one we saw was we went and saw like one of the Purge movies and the entire movie. I was like in the movie <gasps> theater. We're like doing little jump scares at my her. Because it was just fun. Oh my goodness. But you know what? When I first discovered um, Team David Mon's channel, she was um, doing a mukbang and talking about Tales from the Dark Side. Yeah. And that was like the scariest show of my childhood. And I can still remember watching an episode where this guy was like falling apart. Body parts were falling off of him. And the last thing to go was like he got, he ran into some pepper and his nose sneezed off. 
And it's like still there with me. Like I'm, I still can picture it. It's so scary. No. So I want to finish eating. Mm -hmm. So let us know down in the comments section, like what is your favorite classic movie? It doesn't have to be a thriller movie or a horror movie, but what's your favorite classic movie? Oh my goodness. Mine is actually The Birds. Really? Love The Birds. And Alfred Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock. There's so many, like I can't even, like The Quiet Man, definitely yep. up there for me. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I love Sabrina, the original one with Humphrey Bogart and Audrey Hepburn. I love the long, long trailer. With uh, Lucy and Desi. I liked uh, Long Hot Summer. There's so many. There's like, a I lot love of them. them. But I can't wait to find out what everybody else is. I was also like, oh, still am, like a huge Clint Eastwood fan. Like, loved all his original westerns and everything like that. Yeah. So. Outlaw Josie Wales. I mean, you Aww. name it. I love all those movies. Yes. So yeah, let us know down in the comment section what your favorite classic movie is. And if you don't like classic movies, what's your favorite movie of all time? I'm curious to see what some of the people... Me Modern too. movie for me, gotta be Shawshank Redemption. Oh my goodness. That's the show that if it's on... Gotta watch it. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> Sometimes I'll try to flip through really fast because if I can see that movie on, I'm like, man, if he sees it, we're watching it. I think that I've, I've seen that movie, I don't know couple of hundred times i think i've seen Easily. it straight through from beginning to end like three times i think it was because like, it's always on and you just catch it somewhere right i never catch the i've only seen the beginning like two times <laughs> i've only like the first opening sequence like two times because we've always catch it in the middle well that is our video for today if you guys like what you saw do us a favor hit the like button down below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it because yeah, we're gonna finish eating and then i have an idea for a keto chow cheesecake recipe that i want to work on oh sour my. Cream, so. okay we'll have to report on you see, see you next time guys bye, bye.